Hey guys, it's Meme and welcome to part one of our recipe video, our recipe book video. And it's really more of a recipe stand, I should say. It stands up like this and it's made a lot along the lines of my desk calendar to mini album because I love that book and I love how it turned out. So check this out. This little guy opens with a magnet here at the front. And when you get into the inside, you have all of your little tabs and we're even giving you the recipe card printouts. You'll see all of this as we get going, but I wanted to show you in the beginning what it looks like at the end. <laughs> so now you'll know what you'll be making. Also, it flips around like so. So if you're making this recipe in particular, the base, I'm doing it where you cannot see it. I'm the worst here. But the base flips around and magnets to sit up on your counter, just like our other calendar does. So this is part one. Stick around for this. Part two, once it's uploaded, will be linked in this video, so you'll be able to get to it super easy. But for now, let's get started with part one. Let's start with our chipboard. And if you remember, I did a top tip on my product parade channel, which I will link above for you guys, so you can go check that out on turning one of my cutting boards into a chipboard board and that's what this is. So I'm going to use this to cut my chipboard and I thought I would show you cutting because a lot of you guys ask me how I do it because this is too thick to go through my trimmer and I'll show you. So we're going to need two pieces to start with that are seven and a half by six and what I love about that is that means these 12 by 12 pieces I can just cut down the middle at six to start and what I do is I put my chipboard in and I run my blade up and down just like I do paper, but then I just flip it over, go back to my same measurement and cut the back side just the same. And this way it will cut through. It normally doesn't cut through because it's thicker. You know, my chipboard is thicker, but you can see here that it cut through. Okay. So that's six and a half wide. Now I'm going to do the same thing and make this guy, or it's six wide, not six and a half. That was six wide. And now I'm going to make one seven and a half. So this is how tall my recipe book is going to be. Seven and a half. And I will need two of these. So there's one. And I'm just going to take the other one I cut and make it seven and a half. And that'll be the body of my recipe book. Okay. So this is the body of the book. You can see how it works like this. One of them will actually be the cover that flips around as well. So there's those two pieces. Now I need the base of the book and I can actually use a piece that I just chopped off of there. And I need this one to be three and a half by six. So all I'm gonna do is cut this one down to three and a half inches because it's already six. So one piece of 12 by 12 gets you really all the chipboards you're going to need. We are going to use some chipboard for a latch to close the guy up, but that's still going to get you all the chipboard you need is one piece of 12 by 12. That's pretty cool. That means if you buy a pack of 25, you can make 25 recipe books for your friends for Christmas. All right, so there's our chipboard cut. Now I want to poke the holes at the top for my rings because I'm going to ring bind this. That way I can put in and out my recipes as I want to. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to measure over at the top an inch and a quarter from both sides. So from this side here, I'm going to measure an inch and a quarter over. And then from this side, I'm going to come back an inch and a quarter, which would be four and three fourths. Okay, so now I've got those spots marked for where I want my holes to be. Now I've got to decide how far down I want them to go. I think I'm going to take them down about half an inch. That's pretty safe. So using my cutting mat and my ruler, I'm going to, you see I've lined up the top of my chipboard to one piece of my, to one line on my cutting mat there. Okay, I'm going to move over half an inch, which is this line. And then I'm going to trace that onto my chipboard. So you can see down here and up there I've lined up and then I'm going to trace it. All right, so now I know from an inch and a quarter to that half inch mark, this is where I'm going to want my holes to be. Now I'm being super, super specific. You don't have to be. It's nice though. I think it, I think it helps when you're pretty specific about it. So there we go, line that up and I'm just going to make this mark continue out so I can see where I'm cutting. All right, so that's where my holes are going to go. Only need to mark one piece of the chipboard because I can just um, line it up with the other one and trace where the holes are and we'll be fine. All right, so using my crocodile and the larger hole punch, I'm going to go ahead and line it up. And I tell you what I can do. I can even take this if I wanted to and set it to half an inch. So if you didn't want to make that measurement, you could just use your little side piece here and measure it. But I kind of like having the little marks in there because it helps me know I'm in the, the correct spot. 
All right, so I wanna show you. If you can look in there, you can see where my markings are. So I know I'm in the right spot and it helps me to center that cut. So same thing here, center that up. And there we go. Now I just need to match the other ones to the same place. So here's what we'll do. We'll line these guys up, tap them together, make a little circle, and then our holes are in place. Now I think it's good to go ahead and do your holes ahead of time so you can be mindful of where your holes are when you're decorating or designing. This way you kind of know, even if you cover these up, you know you need to punch them again and you don't have to do it after the fact. You kind of know where you're designing. Because sometimes you might put something too high or too low. It just helps you to know, hey, this is kind of unusable space up here, okay? All right, I don't really need to erase that, but I, I will. I'm gonna use my little mono sand eraser just in case it shows. I don't believe it will, but I haven't decided how I'm designing this guy yet. I just know how I'm building the base so far. So I'm gonna get those off just in case they become a problem later. Love this mono sand eraser, it's awesome. Perfect, okay, those are gone. Now to the base, or now to assemble this guy. Okay, to put this guy together, we need one strip of cardstock that is six inches by one inch long. So I'm just gonna cut this down to six inches by one inch. And this is all we're gonna need for now. Don't get rid of this piece, by the way, or don't get rid of a scrap piece of your one inch. We're gonna need something to put our latch on or our little closure on, and we might can use that later. So for this piece, so easy. I'm gonna score it in half. So grab my scoreboard and my bone folder. I'm just gonna score this at half an inch, just like so. Then we just need to apply our adhesive to it. And I'm just gonna use sticky tape. And let me get my little cutting block here. And I'm just gonna run this down on either side just like so, and then tear that away, and then do this one. I'm gonna tell you something right now. If you're making these for Christmas presents, you're going to love the simplicity. I promise, it's easy, it'll give you a big payoff. All right, so there's that. Now, let's go and put this onto our, uh, let's go assemble our book with it. Okay, I'm gonna reveal the backer from one side of my little binder piece, and I'm gonna put it on to the bottom of one of my pieces that has the holes in it. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to um, put my score line on top of the chipboard. I want my score line to lay right over the edge of the chipboard. And let me show you what I mean. When I flip this over, I should be able to see my score line. And I do. So I'm going to use it to help me line that up nice and smooth there. Because that needs to bend without anything blocking it. So you see how I can see the score line? That's a hard one to see. But the score line is right there. Perfect. Now what we're gonna do, we will lay this guy down. We will reveal its adhesive. And then I wanna make sure that I have a pretty good gap between this and the other piece of chipboard we're gonna apply. So I'm just gonna take a piece of my scrap chipboard and lay it in there, and that's gonna become my spacer. So I'm gonna use that to help me space this piece and then lay it down. Now if I've done this correctly, my score line should not be impeded in any way so it should fold nice and easy see and it does perfect so there you go we've got it um adhered on this is the back of our book okay so it will stand just like my other little album did and this will be the front okay but for now we're just going to stop here before we add our little piece on because i'm not exactly sure what i want my latch to look like but once we know we'll get it all done so there's your recipe book assembled now let's work on the pages now this is the paper pack I'm gonna use, and you might have seen me show this. I'm actually doing a class on this one. This one is also the one I'm gonna use for the most um, cards we can get this year, but here's why I chose it, solely for one reason. <laughs> It has this little sticker here that says bait with much love and I love how this looks and I want to turn this into my closure of my recipe book. So that's why I said I'm kind of holding out for that. So the sticker is back here right there, but this is the paper I'm going to use. So I'm going to put the sticker sheet aside and we're going to pick what we want to be our dividers from here. I don't want to use this one as a divider because I could use this for an advent calendar. So I'm going to put that one aside. This is beautiful. That would make a great divider. So I'll put it aside. This one, not this one because I want to use those for something else. So I'm going to put that aside. This is pretty. Oh, this is a perfect divider. I love that one. 
And then, not this one, because I want to use this for something else. So this is how I do it. I just go through the pack and see which ones I want to use. The other thing you need to decide is how many dividers do you want? Do you want appetizers, side dishes, main dishes, salads, desserts? You know, how many different um, dividers do you want? I think I want those five. I want to do appetizers, salad, main dish, dessert, and did I, oh, and sides. I don't think I said sides. So I need five dividers. So I've got two so far. This makes three. Not this one's got pretties on this side. So let's look at this one. This is four. That's a good one. And then five. So I'm going to stop there. I'm not even going to worry about the other pages because we'll use them throughout the book. Now, you might want to, and I've told you this before, you might want to go ahead and pick what page you want to be like your main cover. Um, let me just see if one of these pages is, I really think this peppermint would be super cute as the main cover or even this. I have plenty of pages in here to choose from. So I'm going to go with what I chose for my dividers. Okay, I also can use parts of my dividers too, parts of these sheets I'm going to cut down because I'll have plenty left. So using my trimmer, here's what I need. I have, I'm going to make this so easy, okay. <laughs> dividers are going to be six by six. That's what I'm going to do. That's going to be my divider in the book. You'll see why as we go. So this is cool. This means I'm not going to waste very much paper at all. So I'm going to cut this one down at six by six. And because I want my dividers to all be different, I'm only going to use one piece from this sheet. And listen, if you have a six by six book, you can just use that. If you have a six by six paper pad, it's perfect for this. That's another reason I wanted to do it. I don't have this one in six by six because this is a vintage paper that we ordered in. So I'm going to use the 12 by 12. All right, so I'm going to cut five pieces down to six by six to be my dividers. So here's my dividers. I'm gonna go ahead and do my hole punching as well. Remember how I told you I just wanna know where the holes are supposed to be? So the first thing I'm gonna do is run through and make sure all of my dividers are facing the correct direction. These shouldn't be directional, but I think one of them had ornaments on them. Yep, oh, and this music, that's right. These ornaments, I just wanna make sure I didn't put them upside down, right, because I'm known for that. So we are good there. And what I'm gonna do is line this up with my chipboard I've already made my holes in and just draw a circle in there and then cut those holes all at the same time. So there's a circle. And then I'm just gonna poke the holes for these using my crocodile. So now these guys will line up to be my page dividers for my recipes. Now I'm gonna make little tabs to put down here on the bottom. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So to make my tabs, I'm gonna use my tab punch board and I'm gonna show you a little different way to do it. And this is gonna be so easy and so cute. So the first thing I've done is I've cut for myself a two by two square. I cut five of them because I have five dividers. I'm gonna put this into my scoreboard like this and I'm gonna score it in half at one inch. Now I found that scoring does matter or at least it helps when you're doing the folding on this because you want this to be nice and crisp. I tried to just fold it over and do it. It didn't work as well. So make sure you score these in half. You can always you know, cut your strip two inches um, long and score all the way down and then cut it down into two inch squares, but this only takes a second to do. So get all these guys scored. Now then, we're just going to fold this in half and crease it down just like so. And I want to do that with all of them. Now I'm going to make a tab that will fold over and sandwich my sheet using my tab punch board. This is easy to do and um, I think you'll use it, you'll probably use it like this more than you even do the regular way that it's supposed to be used because I find I'm always looking for tabs. I'm always looking for a punch to make a little fold over tab like this and this is the perfect way. All right, we're using our tab. Now I measured these to the size I wanted based on my stamp set that I'm gonna use. Let me show you that. I don't think I even showed you yet. This is the stamp set I'm using. It's called What's Cooking, and the appetizers is my biggest word. I wanted to make sure it would fit on here, but I also have all my other um, titles that I need for my dividers, so I'm gonna get those from here as well. So that's what this guy's for. Now what I'm gonna do is with the open end facing me, okay, so I have the open end of my fold facing me and the fold in the punch, I've put my little piece in here to block um, so that I don't go too far the other way. And what I want to do is just line this up just like so and punch. Now I'm punching through two layers so it takes a little bit of pressure there. Then I'm going to do the same thing here. Now my paper is a little bit short 
for what I'm trying to line up. So that's why you see me kind of sliding it straight in there. But you see, I get this. And then look, when we open it, we get this. And this is what I'm wanting because I want to sandwich this on my page. So if you struggle with kind of sliding this in and keeping it lined up with that line, you might want to make yours a little taller than I did. But I'm just going to do it this way and just kind of eyeball it. As long as I'm there and I just slide straight in, I'm pretty good. See, they work perfect. So I need five of these. So I found a tip for you. Because my paper's a little short, if I put it right here and I put my finger beside and as I push up, I guide right here, I know I'm in the right spot inside of there. So maybe that'll help you. Because like I said, these are so short, I can push it past. See how I can push it past where I'm supposed to be? So if I put this in here like this, put my finger here and guide it in, then I get the punch every time. Perfect. And there is our little tabs. Okay, let's put them on our dividers. So starting with my first divider, I want to decide which one I want to be the very first one you see. I don't know which one I want to be yet. Let's see. I'm going to flip through for a second. I love this one. Oh, these gray polka dots. This is the one I want to see first. So I'm going to take it out of the pile and bring it over. And my first tab is going to get glued to this end right here. And you can decide how far down you want your tab or how high. I made our album tall enough that our tabs have plenty of room. Even if you're not making your tabs like I did, if you make them bigger, you still have plenty of room down here for your tabs. I wanted to make sure we did, okay? So using some art glitter glue, I'm just gonna run a little bit of glue right down here like so. And I'm gonna lay this down and decide where I want it. I think I want it to line up just where that little curve starts. Now my tab is gonna show, and I'm okay with that, you know, the whole tab, this is what's gonna show on your piece. I think that's cute. You can always decorate that with something if you want to. Then I'm gonna flip this guy over and glue it down in the back as well. And that is divider number one. All right, so because my dividers are not gonna line up perfectly, um, getting five of them across here, let me show you how I'm gonna line them up. So I've got number one put down. I'm gonna go ahead and line up my second divider on top of that one. Then I'm gonna place this one down and I'll show you where, let me put a little glue on it real quick. Okay, I'm gonna place it exactly where that last tab ends and line it up the same height. Okay, if you need to close this to make sure your height is right, you can. So you can kind of lay those next to each other and see that. So that's what I've done. It's basically in the middle. This way, when I go to put my next one on, it'll land here on the next page and I'll have a pretty even placement of these. My last two, I'll put between these guys, okay? Again, that you don't have to do that. You're still gonna be able to see your dividers and things, but that's just how I'm gonna do it. So they'll kind of make sense. So glue this guy down all the way. And now let's put the third one on. And I'm just gonna lift my page a little bit. Actually, it doesn't matter too much because I know this one has to go right to the edge down here. So I'm just wanting to kind of get their height the same. So put that one there. And then open it up and glue it down. All right, so there's three. Now we have the other two to do. So I'm gonna take this one and put it here. And then this little tab, I'm gonna put glue at the top and I'm just gonna line it up in the center of those two, just like so. All right, and then close it up. So now that one will technically live back here somewhere, but it'll be centered in those guys. So all my tabs will look okay. I won't have a bunch of tabs in funny places. All right, let's put this guy on top of here. And now we're gonna center this last tab here. Then this guy obviously lives in the back again. So now my tabs are like this. So I have this one, this one, this one, the middle and the middle. And this is not how I want it laid out. So let me put it how I do want it because I want this gray one on the top. So that's how they'll go. That's my first one, second one, my third one, and then fourth and fifth. All right, now we can stamp them. So my tabs are gonna start with appetizers. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the word appetizers. I'm using Versify Onyx Black just cause I get a really nice crisp image there. I'm gonna line this up here at the bottom of the tab. Stamp that down, isn't that cute? Appetizers, cute. All right, and then the next one, let me go ahead and clean this one and put it back. So my second tab is going to be salads. 
I'm just going to ink this one up. Turn it a little sideways so I can see it. Center that there. Perfect. Salads. That'll probably be the smallest tab in my recipe book. <laughs> Not true. I have lots of different salads I love. Pasta salads, Waldorf salads, you name it. All right, the next one is going to be main dishes. You might want to put sides there. It's all up to you. It's your little uh, recipe book. So main. And I have the word dishes on here too. Main dishes if you want to put it beside it. But I'm okay with just main. I know what that means. All right. Then I've got sides. Oh, this one needs to say dishes because it's side right there. And then I'm going to put dishes right beside it. There we go. My last one is desserts. Perfect. This one will be full, right? Especially for the holidays. Now for my divider pieces, I'm going to decorate them individually. And I'm going to use a lot of these pieces for that. I'm going to use my cut aparts. I'm going to use stickers. I'm going to use all kinds of stuff, whatever's in my stash for this. And what I'm going to do is just cut different ones of these that I want to be featured on here. And I'm just going to run through and decorate them. Imagine that these are like cards, okay? So you're just decorating the front of a six by six card, but it doesn't need a specific sentiment. So that's kind of what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to do one with you guys watching and then I'm going to do the others and record the process and just let you watch it. Let's start with this one. So I'm going to decide what I want to put on there. This Have a Merry Little Christmas is really cute. I love that one. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's cute but also here this one is cute too. So see that's where I struggle is picking them out. I think I know which one I'm going to use. Yeah that's beautiful on there. So now I want to decide what I want to put around it. Okay, I got a plan. So here's the deal. I want this to go in the middle. Well, on the sticker pack, I found this little snowflake piece that is so cute. I'm going to stick it straight down. Let me decide where I want that to go. I think about here. So I'll line that up like that. And then using my cutting mat to help me get it straight. There we go. So there's that little guy. Let's see how that's going to look on there. That's cute. I may even move it down a little bit because I've got a sticker I want to add. I may have to move it over. Let me show you this sticker. I think that this sticker is gorgeous. Wouldn't that be pretty right there? So this can live about like that. That'll be so cute. Now I want you to notice something. I am not adding dimension. I'm sticking things straight down. Okay. The reason for that is I don't want to add dimension to my divider pieces because I have a feeling there'll be lots of recipes I want to put in this book. So I don't want to make it too thick anywhere so that I can't get as many recipes as I want in here. So this part, I'm going to stick straight down all of these pieces. No dimension here for me. I want to keep these pages flat, but cute. Also, because I'm going to be putting this in a kitchen, I think I'm going to add some glue to the back of my stickers to be safe. Just because sometimes there's steam and things. This may be sitting next to while you're cooking or what have you. So I'm just going to add a little glue just to make sure this stays for a long time. And anytime you're using a sticker, you can always do that if you want to just make sure it has a little extra oomph to it. All right, and now I can cut off this excess piece. And guess what? I can use it on another piece. I don't have to get rid of it. I'm just going to trim that away like so. And that's going to be my appetizer divider. And I think that's super cute. So number one is done. So I'm going to run through and do the others and let you watch. And that's basically how I'm going to do them.
Okay, so there's desserts. There's my sides. Look, I tried to eat salad all year, I promise. <laughs> I thought that was funny. This is for my appetizers. That's the first one. This is my side dish. I went ahead and stamped using my same stamp set inside that little piece. I thought that was cute. And then my mains and then my um, appetizer. So that's how that's going to go into my book. So let's finish putting the shell of the book together real quick. So using my two inch circle punch, I'm going to punch two black circles out and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Remember that um, sticker I told you about that was the whole reason I used this paper pack for this project, the one that says baked with much love. This guy is going to live on my two inch circle punch just like this. I'm going to add a little glue to the back of this one. And then I'm going to apply this to this little circle. I'm going to try to get it as centered as I can, just like that. The teeniest, tiniest little bit hangs over the side. I'm not going to stress about that. But this is going to be what I'm going to use to close my um, album with. So let me pull, or my recipe book with. Let me pull these pieces back over. So this is the piece that is the bottom where the little closure needs to go. The closure needs to be right here. So what I'm going to do here is first I'm going to add a little strip to hold this guy on. So this little strip is one inch by three inch and I'm going to score this at two inches. Okay, so that's going to be the piece that will flip up to hold our book closed. Let me show you what I mean. So here is the base of our recipe book. That two inch piece is going to get glued underneath and then our little circle is going to get glued here and it'll fold up. Okay, so what I need to do is go ahead and just get this guy folded, get him started. Okay, and I need to glue him down to the center. So I'm going to use my um, cutting mat here, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing, to help me get it centered. And since this is six inches, I need to go uh, one, two, right here. See that? One, two and a half, one, two and a half. So this is where my tab needs to go, right here in the middle. So I'm going to put glue on the bottom section of that tab. I need to refill my bottle. I keep saying that, but I haven't done it yet. And then this guy is going to go underneath there. So I'm going to slide that under just like so. Again, with the score, I want the score to be free to move. See how easy that moves? So that's going to get glued down just like that. Now on the top of this guy is where this little dude's going to live, okay? So it's going to get glued down just like that to the top. Yes, we're going to put magnets in, but not yet. This part is just the exterior part, so we're okay. So let's add some glue to this piece. Now, I'm not using chipboard for this. You see I'm using um, cardstock, but by the time we put all our layers on, this guy will be fine. He'll hold up for a long time. You can, if you think you need to, reinforce your little tab here with maybe some um, tape or something if you want to add some tape to it to kind of make it stronger, but I feel like uh, this guy will be fine. This is a good sturdy chipboard. It just goes like that. I mean, good sturdy cardstock, and it'll just go like that ever so often. Okay, magnet needs to live back here, and a magnet needs to live on the front cover. So here's what we're going to do. So I've got a little bit hanging off of that um, piece I put underneath here. So I'm going to trim that away so that it's nice and circular. Just those tiny little points right there. They're gone now. Okay, here's where we're going to have to do a little fancy footwork. Let me get my magnets. So you're going to need a couple magnets, and this is a plus and a minus from our basic gray that we carry. These are the ones we have in stock. I love these guys, by the way. They are pre-adhesived, which makes them even better. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to remove the backer of one of them, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and place it down where I want it. And I think I want it kind of close to the edge up here on the flap. That's where I'm going to start, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my minus right here like so, okay? I'm going to remove the adhesive protection, so I've, I have exposed the adhesive there. And now, standing our album up and placing this piece, this is the front of our album, placing it right up against our base like so, bringing these guys to the top and making like a little teepee because that's how our um, book is going to stand. I'm going to lift this guy up and put my magnet into place. And that's where it's gonna live, okay? So I'm gonna lay this down so you can see what I've done here. So I've just done that. And when I lift this off, now my magnet is where it's supposed to be. See that? Perfect. Now I'm gonna cover these because you guys have asked me to show you how to cover them in my um, 
I try to cover them all the time, but I don't really care if they're covered. I think they look fine. They look neat and clean as it is, so I don't worry about it. Now, when we open this book, here's what's cool. We flip the cover back, okay, which brings, let me do it where you guys can see it, brings the magnet to the inside now. See that? So when we're using the book to show us a recipe, we just turn this under and let that magnet grab in the back, and now it can stand up for us to use it as a recipe book. Okay? All right. I mean, it's a recipe book anyway, but you understand what I'm saying. And that'll make more sense as we get going. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other little black circle and cover this side. Actually, I may not. I don't really care to cover the magnet. I think it looks fine like it is. I'm definitely going to cover this one because of where it sits, but I think I'm just going to leave that one exposed. It does not bother me. If it does, Move your magnet down a little bit and cover it, but I'm not going to cover it. It'll be fine. All right, now we can cover our fronts and our backs and all the pretty little pieces, or put all our pretty pieces on. We can add these guys, and then we get to the recipe page. Now, in my opinion, this video is getting a little bit long, so here's what we're going to do. This is going to be part one, because it's going to take me a while to do all the covering, so this will let you get caught up to me here. Also, I did not mention, you will need some rings, and I'm going to use the larger rings for this one, because I feel like as I load this guy up with recipes, um, I will need it. Coming up in the part two, you will see that I have created for you a printable that will be a free PDF. It'll be in part two of this video for your recipe card and something really cool for the instructions. All right, guys, that's part one. Another thing I want to say, I want to say it here toward the end really quick. So if you follow me all over the place, you would have heard me say that I'm going to do a project using this paper pack for a recipe book. This is the book I was going to use this paper pack on. I will still make one of these later in the year, so maybe in August or September, using this paper pack, but I will do it exactly the same, but using this paper pack for you guys. So if you don't need to wait on me, you can go ahead and use this paper pack to do it. But otherwise, um, if you'll just stick around, this will come later. I'm trying to do Christmas in July, and I was going to make this as a gift, which I think is fine. Um, I would totally give this to somebody as a gift so they could use it year round. But then I thought I'd kind of like to have an album that's just for my Christmassy um, recipes, the ones I make that time of year. So you're going to get this album twice. Just today, we're starting with this one. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you make one of these, and I hope that you will, these are super fun to make, head to my website called maymaymadeit.com. You can share your images in our customer gallery and pick up any supplies I've used today if you need them. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. We'd love to have you as part of our Made It group. Talk to you again next time, guys. Bye-bye.